I'm making murder cookies, but are they really to die for? The recipe for these murder cookies is actually a secret scotch cookie recipe that a Reddit user found while searching a murder that happened in her house 100 years ago, just about. This user found out that the old neighbor to this house owned a bakery and was also the owner of a top cookie recipe of the year in the 30s. So I'm going to attempt to make the murder cookie um, given just the ingredients and a very vague list of instructions. There are measurements listed, but then if you look down on Reddit where other users have tried to recreate this cookie, they've subbed this or added this or used less of this. I don't have time to read through that. I'm gonna just start here and I'll give it my best go. The first step says to cream the sugar and the shortening. That's pretty self-explanatory and that's pretty common for making any type cookie. So I think I got that. One and a half cups of sugar, sounds about right, and a cup of shortening. So far so good. I want it to be good and fluffy. Okay, I'm gonna add molasses. So I'm wondering if the neighbor had something to do with the murder that happened in their house. And what if the cookie was what killed them? It doesn't have chocolate in it, so I don't think it's really gonna be to die for. Now it says to sift the dry ingredients. Oh, a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of mace. Do you know what mace is? Mace is only like the most expensive spice. A little bit goes a long way and this has a whole teaspoon in it, which kind of makes me a little nervous. All right, so I'm going to add this into the wet ingredients along with the milk. So I'm gonna kind of alternate it. Good. Now we drop it onto the pan. It smells good. Let me taste the batter. It's like a ginger snap cookie. Drop them by tablespoonfuls onto greased sheets. So far, I don't really see what's so special about this. This would probably be a good holiday cookie recipe. Now the picture of these online are not that perfect. I'm gonna try to make mine a little more uniform because I take my baking very seriously. Roll it just a little bit. Press down lightly with a floured glass. I'm just gonna use a floured spoon. You get the idea. The last line says bake, but do not overbake. There's no temperature or time. So I'm gonna go in with the first sheet. My oven is preheated to 350. I've got 12 on here. They're not all quite the same size, but I'm not a very consistent person. We'll check back in like 10 minutes. All right, here they are. These do not look quite like the picture. So I bet if I would have chilled my dough first, um, they might not have spread so much, but if they're still like chewy and gooey in the middle, then I'll be okay with that. It doesn't really give you a lot of description on Reddit as far as why people love these so much or what made theirs special. I'm going to cool them. I feel like they are gonna be kind of chewy in the middle like a sugar cookie or a chocolate chip cookie. I don't want them crunchy like a ginger snap. I'm gonna chill this batter and give it another go in a little while. I mean, they're still warm, but it's good and soft, still in the middle for the ultimate taste test. If I die, then you'll know why. The mace is strong. Maybe that's why they're called murder, because it's like, they kill you with the mace. For me, they're the perfect combination of salty and sweet. I mean, I love the chewiness, I love the warm spice. For me, I probably would like them a little bit thicker. I mean, other than that, I mean, they're good. I'm gonna do it again, make them a little bit thicker. So I'm hoping that happens just by chilling the dough, in which case these measurements would work. Chilling the dough did produce a slightly thicker cookie. So that's good. I also didn't flatten it down quite as much in the beginning. Duh. So I know they're gonna taste the same. There's really no point in doing another taste test, but I don't think my verdict is gonna change. This way it's gonna be better because it's gonna be a little bit chewier and thicker. But at the end of the day, no one is dying for these murder cookies. If you'd like me to try out some more crazy recipes, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook.